Oh, well. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give it freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching on the camera, and the saints that around the world that we don't even know about. You know, they probably got a couple of saints in Brazil. You know what I mean? You never really know. It might be like an island out there, just all Hebrews out there. Maybe in Yemen. You know what I'm saying? Yemen, they out there. You know what I'm saying? America saying that they, they dropping bombs on Yemen. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. What is Yemen? You know, a lot of people don't even know where Yemen, Yemen is, right? But ain't, that where, ain't that where uh -huh. Edom used to be? Huh? Ain't that where Edom used to be? Uh, I guess. Yeah, uh, more like more like closer to the Queen of Sheba. Mm. Like across the water. But um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Where you know what I'm saying, it's close to where the the Saudi Arabians are and all that. You know what I mean? They dropping bombs over. But you know, we might we got some people that's over there. We might got a couple. You know, got got a couple saints over there. You never know. We got saints all the way around the world. We just pray that the Most High God connects us with them. But we say no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent, that they might live. Let's uh let's uh let's recap. So last week, what did we talk about? What did we talk about last week? What prophets did we talk about? What prophets did we speak about? There were two prophets. We talked about Ezekiel, right? A little bit about Ezekiel. And we talked about who else? Didn't we talk about Jeremiah? No, not David. We talked about Jeremiah and we talked about Ezekiel. Right? Um, one of the things we talked about with Jeremiah and Ezekiel um, is we talked about the new covenant. All right? We talked about, remember Ezekiel said if we repent, we'll be given a new spirit and a new heart. And then we went to the uh, Jeremiah and Jeremiah told us about the new covenant. All right, and he broke down a new covenant for us and kind of let us know how, how the Most High God set it forth. We talked about how Jeremiah prophesied that the new covenant wouldn't be according to the covenant that was made with our fathers out on Horeb. Remember, Horeb is Mount Sinai. That's where, uh, that's where Moses was given the Ten Words, right? The Ten Commandments. <clears throat> when we look at that, that the way tra uh, word commandment was translated there in Exodus, it's actually translated, it's actually better translated as words. Right. So it's the 10 words or the, the, the 10 speeches that the most high God spoke. He spoke it out of his own mouth. Right. And and uh, Moses heard it. People heard it. And after a while, the people said, mm -mm -mm. you going up there, you hear from him, you can bring it back down to us. Right. But the most high God told us it's not going to be according to that covenant. He's going to make a new covenant with us, a new arrangement. Um. So that's what we kind of looked into a little bit last week. Now we're going to continue on. Who remembers who our king is in the time frame that we're reading about? Who is our king? Now, Jeremiah is the prophet, right? And the prophet is somebody that has a vision or a dream of the most high God and they speak, right? <clears throat> the guy who ate the honey. The book, very good, but that's uh, that's uh, Ezekiel. But Ezekiel is also a prophet, right? So he heard he had a vision and a dream. He speaks of the Most High God, right? But our king is Zedekiah, right? Right now, Zedekiah, Nebuchadnezzar is the person who's he's like an emperor, right? He got a whole empire, so he's a king also. He's like the top king. He's a right now the book considers him the king of kings, right? There's a bunch of kings, and he's a king over all the kings. 
right? So Nebuchadnezzar is the head honcho right now. Remember, he took David, and not David, Daniel, um, and Daniel and a lot of the Hebrews is serving him, right? So everybody got to kind of bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. He's ruling everything. Zedekiah is a king in Jerusalem, king in Judah, right? So let's go to Jeremiah. Let's see how Jeremiah talk about Zedekiah. This is Jeremiah chapter uh, 21. Let's do verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 21, verse 1. A lot of these boys don't understand this book, and they make they make errors according to this book because they don't take the time to learn it. Some of the book is too boring. For you. And the only reason it's boring because they don't understand everything. Look, the root of everything is not understanding it. I don't see how any of this book could be boring to you if you understand what you're looking at. Y'all sit there and watch uh, the movie. What's the movie? What's the movie they be cracking each other's head? Troy. All right? They got a movie, Troy. Y'all watch Troy. It's way more action in this book than Troy. Right? I can show you parts of the book that's way funnier than some of these movies y'all watch. Right? The book got entertainment in it, too. Somebody should just cut me a budget so I can make a good movie out of it. I can make, look, it could be the Marvel Cinematic Universe you messing with me. Somebody, somebody, somebody going to trust me with their millions of dollars. I, I lose that thing. They'd be mad at me. <laughs> I'm talking about, I'll be like, nah, mm -mm, we can't put that in. That ain't in the book. Look, man, we got to sell some records. We got to sell some tickets. We ain't got time for that. We got to tell the truth. That's what the people lack. The people lack truth. Everybody lying to everybody. You where? Jeremiah chapter 21, verse 1. Took you long enough. Let's go. Jeremiah chapter 21, verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from Yahuwah when King Zedekiah sent unto him Pasher, the son of Melchiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, saying, <clears throat> Inquire, I pray thee, of Yahuwah for us. Right, so look, hey, why don't you talk to Yahuwah for us? Right, he, they asked him, "Can you say something to Yahuwah? We need a word from him." Let's see. Keep going. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, makes war against us. So be, if so be that the Lord will deal with us according to all His wondrous works, that He may go up from us. Then said right, Jeremiah, so he said, "Listen." Nebuchadnezzar keep messing with us. He's trying to make war with us. So go ahead and ask the Most High God, can he do some of his wonder, wonderful works so that Nebuchadnezzar will leave us alone? Right? Watch this. Keep going. Then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall you self, shall say to Zedekiah, Thus says Yahuwah God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon and against the king Right? So now listen. Look, listen to how they, they went to the Most High God. They went to Jeremiah asking him to speak to the Most High God, right? They said, listen, can you inquire of Yah? Can you ask Yah to make Nebuchadnezzar leave us alone? To do one of his wonderful works that we always read about and hear about and make Zedekiah go away. The Most High God responded to him and said, I'm going to tell you what, look, this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to make you and your weapons turn back the weapons that you're using against Nebuchadnezzar to fight against him. So in other words, the Most High God said, no, 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 no. I'm going to do a wonderful work against you as opposed to doing a wonderful work to help you. Right? That's the response that they cry for help. Keep going. Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith you fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you out without the walls. And I will assemble them into the midst of this city. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. And afterward shall, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants and the people, and such as are left in his city from the from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword, and he shall not spare them, neither have pity nor have mercy. And unto this people 
thou shalt say, thus says Yahuwah, behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He that abides in this city shall die by the sword and famine and by pestilence. But he right. That so who, who, he, whoever stays in the city, you're going to die by famine. Right. And of pestilence. Right. So he said, I'm setting before you the way of life and the way of death. If you stay in this city, that's the way of death. Watch this. Keep going. But he that goes out and falls to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live and his life shall be unto him for a prey. Or right. But if you end up going and you fall before the, the Chaldeans, you fall in front of the Chaldeans, then you'll live. And you're going to have your life as if it was like a like like it was a uh, like it was a prey, like it was like a spoil of war, like you won it. Right. Keep going. <clears throat> or I've set my face against this city for evil. And not for good, says Yahuwah. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And touch he shall do what? Burn it with fire. Right? The Most High God is giving them hints for what's about to happen. He's telling them the king of Babylon is going to burn this city with fire. Understand, our people haven't come to terms yet with what's about to happen. Right? We kind of like, we kind of in the city and we trying to fight a war. Right, so Jeremiah is kind of speaking against that war. Keep going, watch this. <clears throat> and touching this house of the king, of the king of Judah, say, hear the word of the Lord. O house of David, thus says Yahuwah, execute judgment in the morning and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. Lest my fury go out like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Behold, I am against thee, O inhabitant of the valley and rock of the plain, says Yahuwah, which say, who shall come down against us or who shall enter into our habitation? But I will punish you according to your fruit, according to the fruit of your doings, says Yahuwah. And I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all things round about it. That's in? Yeah. Go to uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 24. It's Ezekiel chapter 24, verse uh, 1. At this point, we are already at war with the king of, ba uh, king of Babylon, with Nebuchadnezzar, right? And so us being at war with the king of, uh, of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, we're we're trying to find ways out of it. So we went to to Jeremiah. We looking like, uh, ask God. Yeah, you know I mean, what are you gonna do about this? Now, mind you, Jeremiah been telling us the whole time, right? We are going to lose to Nebuchadnezzar if you give yourself over. It's gonna be good for you. If you resist it, you gonna mess around and die. He's been telling us and repeating this to us, but we don't believe it because that's strange, right? This is we the people of God. This is the city of the Most High God. This is his temple. His temple lives here. There's no way that the Most High God that gave us a law that said our temple cannot be defiled. And any stranger that goes into it, you know, you know what I'm saying, shall be put to death. Right? All these laws that we have, it doesn't make sense to us that the Most High God will let this king come over here and just waltz in. So we struggling with all the words that Jeremiah is telling us. It's like, mm, I don't know if that makes sense. But he's given certain prophecies to Jeremiah, just letting them know, yo, the city going to be destroyed. Nebuchadnezzar going to set it on fire. We haven't really come to terms with, oh, we about to lose our temple. Right? That hasn't really occurred to us yet. Right? What? Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 1. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Let's see what the book say. Again, in the ninth year of the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, write thee the name of the day, even this same day. The king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. Right? So you can see the same thing. On this day that he's writing, for, writing this, the king of Babylon is fighting against Jerusalem right now. Right? So he's circling the city again. Remember, he did this with Jeconiah. Right? Jeconiah, he did the exact same thing. He set himself around, then he took Jeconiah, and he carried him off. 
So now the same thing has happened in the Zedekiah. He's circling around. On this day, the Most High God told Ezekiel, he was like, yeah, this day, he's setting himself against him. Write it down. Write the name of this day down. He's telling them to document the fact that today starts the end. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And utter, utter a parable against the rebellious house and say unto them, thus says Yahuwah God, set on a pot and set it on and also pour water into it. Gather the pieces thereof into it, every good piece, the thigh, the shoulder, fill it with the choice bones. Take the choice of the flock and burn also the bones under it and make it boil well and let them seed the bones of it therein. Therefore, right? So listen, he's saying, take, take a pot, put water in the pot, put a fire under the pot, and use the bones to fuel the fire, right? So you take you take bones of a of a sheep or a lamb, use those bones to fuel the fire, and then take the best pieces of the meat, right? Including the bones, everything, and put it inside of the pot. In other words, you boiling this meat. You boiling a lamb or a goat or, you know what I'm saying? You just boiling it. Watch this. Keep going. Wherefore, thus says you who are God, woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose scum is therein and whose scum is not going out of it. Bring it out piece by piece. Let no lot fall upon it. For her blood is in the midst of her. She, she set it upon the top of a rock. She poured it not upon the ground to cover it with dust. That it might cause fury to come up to take vengeance. I have set her blood upon the top of a rock that it should not be covered. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah God, woe to the bloody city. I will even make the pile for fire great. Keep on wood, kindle the fire, consume the flesh and spice it well and let the bones be burnt. Then set it empty upon the coals thereof that the brass of it may be hot and may, and may burn and that the filthiness of it may be molten in it, that the scum of it may be consumed. She has wearied herself with lies, and her great scum went, went not forth out of her. Her scum shall be in the fire, and the filthiness is lewdness. In thy filthiness is lewdness, because I have purged thee, and thou was not purged. Thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness anymore, till I have caused my fury to rest upon thee. I, Yahuwah, have spoken it. It shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not go back, neither will I spare, neither will I repent according to thy ways and according to thy doings. Shall they judge thee, says Yahuwah God. All right. So now Ezekiel gave a, had to give a prophecy about making it hot for the people. He gave them a picture of you sitting here and you boiling meat inside of a pot until all the water is boiled up and everything just burning and all the filth that's inside of the pot. From it burning and it turning black and, 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 and just burning away, it just keeps burning and burning. He said until it becomes molten. So everything is melting. The pot is melting. Everything is just burning, burning, burning. That's how hot it's getting. Right? He said, and I'm not going to turn back. I'm not going to turn away. In other words, oh, it's about to happen. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And also the word of Yahuwah came unto me saying, son of man, behold. I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with the with the stroke. Right? Watch what he said. He said, with a stroke, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes. So in other words, like this, instantly. Right? Instantly. When they say with a stroke, instantly. Right? Out of nowhere, I'm taking away from you the desire of the, your eyes. He's talking to the prophet Ezekiel. Watch this. Yet neither shall thy mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. For right, he told God, Ezekiel, when I take away the desire of your eyes, you can't mourn. In other words, you can't cry about it. You can't weep. Right? You can't take time to think about it and be like, you know what I'm saying, be sad about it. He said, you don't have time for that. You can't weep. You can't cry. Don't let no tears drop. This is what he's telling Ezekiel. Right? Y'all think I'm bad when I tell y'all, stop all that crying. Right? He told a grown man, I'm going to take the desire of your eyes, take it away from you in an instant. And you can't cry about it. Don't spend no time soaking. Don't spend no time feeling bad about it. Keep it moving. Watch this. Keep going. 
forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not bread, eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at the and at evening my wife died, and I did right? in the morning. Look what he said. He said, In the morning he spoke to the people. Most of God didn't tell him exactly what was about to happen. He just said, I'm going to take away the desire of your eyes. Right? So he got up in the morning. He started speaking to the people. And then guess what? Books say his wife died in the evening. In an instant. Boom. Just like that. Just like he said. In a stroke, she's going to be taken away. And his wife died. That's his wife. That's the desire of his eyes. Books say he couldn't even mourn about it. You know what I'm saying? You know, one of us die, guess what we're going to do? We're going to mourn. We have a funeral. We're going to mess around and have a funeral. You know what I'm saying? Somebody going, you know what I'm saying? Some lying preacher going to get up there and start teaching. You know what I'm saying? Telling lies and doing all this other stuff. We're going to have a funeral. And we're going to cry. And we're going to remember the good times. Right? And we're going we gonna to try to use whatever, use that motivation to carry on whatever legacy is left behind. Ezekiel couldn't do that. Most High God told Ezekiel, you can't do that. He said, don't cry about it. Don't take no time to mourn. You better keep that hat on your darn head and put your darn shoes on. In other words, keep moving. Watch this. Keep going. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. And the people said unto me, will you not tell us what these things are to us that thou doest so? Right? So the people can look at them. They like, Bro, your wife died. And he just keep it moving. He ain't crying about it. So they're like, oh, this must mean something. Because remember, Ezekiel is already known. Remember, Ezekiel don't talk. Right? So Ezekiel don't talk at all unless the word of the Most High God coming out of his mouth. So everybody already look at Ezekiel and they looking like anything he do is kind of like you got to pay attention to what he's doing. So then they see his wife die and they see he don't even mourn for her. He just got to keep it pushing. They looking like, can you tell us what this means? Because remember, he can't talk. So this happens. He's not talking to nobody. And he's just keeping it moving. Don't cry, don't nothing. But they ain't hearing no word of God from him either. They looking like, can you just tell us what it means? Because they know once they hear it, they know the only time he talks is when he's telling the word of the Most High God. So they trying to see what it is. Let's see. Keep going. <clears throat> Then I answered them, the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Speak to the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, and, and that which your soul pitieth. And your sons and your daughters, whom you have left, shall fall by the sword. And ye, sh and ye shall do as I have done. Ye shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of men. And your tires shall be upon your head and your shoes upon your feet. Ye shall not mourn nor weep, but ye shall pine away for your iniquities and mourn one towers one towards another. Thus so he told us he's going to take away our temple. He's going to take away our city, right? And from there, we ain't even going to have time to mourn. So he said, everything you see me doing, it's going to be y'all. All right, keep going. And ye shall do as I have done. Ye shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of men. Your tile shall be upon your head, and your shoes upon your feet. Ye shall not mourn nor weep, but ye shall pine away for your iniquities, and mourn one towards another. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign, according to all that, it, that he has done shall ye do. And when, he, when, when this comes, ye shall know that I am Yahuwah God. Also, thou son of man, shall not be in the day Shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons and their daughters, that he that escapeth in that day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear it with thine ears? In that day shall thy mouth be open to him which is escaped, and thou shalt speak and be no more dumb. Thou shalt not, thou shalt be a sign unto them that they shall know that I am Yahuwah. All right, so, so the Most High God told Ezekiel, He said, "Listen, on the day that I do this, in other words, on the day that the temple is destroyed, I'm gonna send somebody, and they're gonna come, and they're gonna tell you that it's destroyed. 
Because, you know, somebody going to be frantic like, I just came from Jerusalem. It's destroyed, bro. It's all gone. I'm telling you, they, they just knocked the whole thing over, lit it on fire, man. Right? Ezekiel going to be sitting there because he can't talk. So Ezekiel going to be sitting there like, trying to, you know what I'm saying, communicate without words. After he tell them, the book say, Most High God told them, after you hear that, you're going to be able to talk. You're no longer going to be, you know what I'm saying, mute. You're no longer going to be deaf. Not deaf, in, in the sense, but you, you're going to be able to talk. Right? And then, after that, that's supposed to be a sign to all the people. So all the people that was walking around all this time and couldn't see him talk, and all of a sudden now he talked, that was supposed to be a sign to the people like, man, this boy was the real one. That's exactly how he said it was going to happen. Right? Because he could only talk when he was given the word of the Most High God. Right? Watch this. Keep going. The word of the that Lord came to me. That was the end? Yeah, that was it. So let's go back to Jeremiah. This is uh, Jeremiah. Let's do chapter 37. Jeremiah chapter 37. Oh, okay. Jeremiah chapter 37, verse 1. Yeah, sister, sister, sister Pamela, now nah, you don't play. You don't play. A lot of people running their mouth talking about they want to be a prophet. Right? Thought they self to be in prophets. It come with a cost and come with a sacrifice. There's a lot of stuff that y'all got to understand. It's like we, we, you know, so you got to remember when the sons of Zebedee <coughs> were talking to Yahushua. Right? Talking about James and John. When they spoke to Yahushua, you know what they said to him? I want to sit at your right hand. Right? And Yahushua responded to him. He was like, man, you don't even know what you're asking for. Right? You don't even know what you're asking for. But to do something like that, you got to make a sacrifice. That's why he said, he said, are you going to be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized with? Right? He talking about the sacrifice. Yahushua was talking about the sacrifice that he was about to have to make. Yahushua made the ultimate sacrifice and did it clean. Right? We take days off. Sometimes we be having a bad day. It's just like, man, I'm about to sin. I'm about to give in to my lust. I'm about to give in to this. Right? I'm sad that things ain't going the way that I want them to. And people are being mean to me. Or people, it don't feel fair. Right? We say that stuff. That's what's happening. So we get emotional about these different things that's going on in our life. and then we take it easy or we just outright sin or rebel against God. Y'all sure couldn't do that. He had to be strict and focused his entire life. Do the whole thing correctly. He had to do the whole thing correctly. Couldn't have no missteps. We walk around, we indulge ourselves. Something happened. We give ourselves an excuse to just sin or make ourselves feel good with something that's unrighteous. Right? Y'all sure on the other hand? Mm -mm. Strict. Straightforward. He don't get mad and make himself feel better by cussing. By lying. Right? He don't get bad by making somebody else feel bad. No. What he got to do, he got to keep it together. Everything on him. He can't get nothing the easy way. Everything got to go through the narrow path. And he walk it. And he keep walking. And he focused. And people trying to distract him. And he stay focused. And at the very end, after doing everything he's supposed to do, guess what? I got to take the penalty of a sinner. I got to get treated like a sinner my whole life. I ain't never seen my entire life but everybody walking around looking like I'm a drunkard. Looking like I'm a gluttonous. Like I'm greedy. My whole life I give to everybody. And Yahushua, he's sitting there giving to everybody his entire life. And people treat him like he's the scum. They poking at him. Questioning him. Right? Constantly. And at the very end of that, after upholding righteousness, after doing everything he's supposed to do, after doing everything that the Most High God asked for him, 
He got to get nailed to a cross, spit on, slapped. Humiliated in front of all these people. Hung up on the cross until he died and suffered. They stabbed the man in the darn side. Let him bleed out. Then they take the darn man down after nailing him to the cross. They take his butt down and just throw him inside of a tomb. Well, that's a sacrifice. So, of course, the man that make that sacrifice is going to be the king of all. <coughs> because he made the ultimate sacrifice. It's a lot of times we be running our darn mouth. I want to be a prophet and call it exalting themselves to apostles. I wish God would speak to me. I wish God would show me a miracle. Do you understand? These are the things that comes with sacrifice. If he gave it to you, you're going to have to give up something. <sighs> this world got our minds warped. That's why he said, he said, you come to me and don't hate your mother, your father, even your own life. Not worthy to be my disciple. Absolutely right. You got to be ready to give up <clears throat> everything. Not just some things, not just the things that, yeah, I don't really feel too much everything you got to be able to put yourself in a mindset that nothing no matter how much you like it or love it will come between you and the most high god because as soon as you are not prepared for that thought guess what satan attacking right so that's why you can see a prophet like ezekiel has already prepared himself mentally he's listening to the most high god the man has to sit on his side for for 390 days then on the other side for 40 days he's already made sacrifices then you gotta get up you can't talk the most I got to I've been able to talk my whole life if I'm Ezekiel Ezekiel he been able to talk his entire life the man is a priest then all of a sudden most I got come to you and say you can't talk no more until I tell you to talk you walk around just regular day stuff. You want to say hi to somebody. You can't even get it out no more. Every morning, your routine is to come out, say hi. You know what I'm saying? Make your little pot of coffee. You know what I'm saying? Water your plants. He got his whole routine, right? Talk to your neighbors. So he doing everything his routine is. And then guess what? When it comes time to talk to the neighbors, I can't do it. Can't do it. Only time I can talk is when the most high God give me a prophecy. That's a sacrifice that you got to make. That's a sacrifice. We are not prepared. <coughs> Y'all willing, we're going to be prepared, but we are not prepared to make the sacrifices that's necessary to, for us to make. And not being prepared and being entitled and feeling like God ought to do this for me or God ought to. Do you understand that nothing in this life? Right. We are. We shouldn't look at anything in this life and feel like we entitled to it. If we righteous, the only thing we should expect is that we die and get resurrected. Right? But it's the things that we have in this life that tempt us in the damnation. And that's what we got to change. We got to set ourselves up to be willing to give up everything in this life. Everything in this life. And once we got that mindset, ain't nothing going to happen. Right? That's why Ezekiel, he told Ezekiel, he said, man, I'm going to take away the, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to take away the desire of your eye. And that even his wife died. She's la darn weak. <clears throat> right? It's tough. It's tough. Because it take a man of God to be able to take something like that. Be able to do that and still be faithful to the man. Man, tell you what's about to happen. You still got to be faithful to the man. He said, you can't even cry about that thing. Don't even shed a tear about that thing. <laughs> Keep moving. Wife ain't got nothing to do with none of this foolishness. Your wife righteous. You know what I'm saying? Your wife follow your lead. She righteous. She ain't doing none of the foolishness that they doing over there in the land. Nevertheless, I'm taking your wife, Ezekiel. Only if you entitled. Only if you entitled and your mindset is, I deserve my wife. My wife, my wife don't deserve that. Right. If your mind is entitled like that, then, OK, you're going to rebel against the most high God. But when you when you settle in your mind, the truth 
And the truth is, I ain't entitled to nothing here. Most like I asked a question, who, who, uh, who by worrying can add an ounce of light? What do you say? Who by worrying can add, can add a, a uh, day to uh, his uh, life or an hour to his life or something like that? Who, who by worrying can add an inch to a stature? <clears throat> right? You can't change nothing. And you can't, yeah. You can't change nothing. You didn't ask to be here. You just here. And that's it. So it's like none of this is promised to you. None of this that, that we got around us is promised to us. <clears throat> Matter of fact, everything that's promised us revolves around death. So everything we get got to come in the resurrection. And if that's our mindset, then we're not entitled. We understand that everything here is temporary. It's just like, okay, I'm just passing through. And what do I got to do to get to the part that's not temporary? How do I get into the kingdom? All right, this is Jeremiah chapter 37. Give me verse one. And King Zedekiah, <clears throat> the son of Josiah, reigned instead of Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. But neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land did hearken unto the words of Yahuwah, which he spake by the prophet Jeremiah. He tells them, Zedekiah, nor his servants, nor the people of the land, none of them paid attention to what uh, Jeremiah was talking about. All this time, all these prophecies we've been reading, None of them have been paying attention to what he's saying. Jeremiah is talking to these boys. They ripping this book up and throwing it in the fire. They slapping the man. They keep putting them in and out of prison. All this stuff is happening. And he's about to go back to, we about to read it. He's about to go back to prison. Watch it. Keep going. Zedekiah the king sent Jehuqal, the son of Shelemiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Maasiah the priest to the prophet Jeremiah saying, pray now unto Yahuwah our God for us. Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people for they had not put him into prison. Then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt. And when the Chaldeans had besieged Jerusalem, heard <clears throat> Jerusalem, heard tidings of them, they departed from Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord unto, Jer unto pro the prophet Jeremiah saying, wait, hold on. So look, they asked, Again, Jeremiah, just like before when we read, they come to Jeremiah and they're like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you talk to God for us and, uh, you know what I'm saying? Get them to, um, to have the king of Babylon to turn away from us. You know what I'm saying? Leave us alone. Do one of your wondrous works. You remember Jeremiah came back to him like, nah, I'm going to turn y'all away from Nebuchadnezzar and y'all going to be the ones that lose. I'm going to fight against my own people is what y'all was saying, right? So now they did the same thing. They came back a little later. It looked like, okay, okay, give us a break. You know what I'm saying? Talk to the most high God and just see if he would give us a little bit of relief. And then all of a sudden, the king of Egypt came. So the king of Egypt was down to the south of us. He came up trying to fight against Nebuchadnezzar. And so when the people that was besieging us, remember when we say besiege or siege, it's because they circling around our walls and they beating down our walls and they blocking everything off. So we ain't got no food that's coming in or out. Right? And it's starting to get tough. So when they do that, they sieging us. Then all of a sudden, you hear about uh, the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh. So Pharaoh come up and he about to fight. The Chaldeans hear of it. The Chaldeans are the, king, the Babylonians, right? They hear about it and they looking like, uh... Let's get some reinforcements. So they leave. Right? So when they leave, how you think we feel? We feel like, okay, we might got a chance. Right? Because they about ready to beat us up. They about ready to get us. Then all of a sudden, they, they just leave. We don't really know why, but they just leave. Watch this. Then came the word of the Lord unto the prophet Jeremiah, saying, <clears throat> just says the Lord God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Thus shall you say to the king of Judah that sent you unto me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt in their own land. The Chaldeans shall come again and fight against this city and take it and burn it with fire. Thus says Yahuwah, deceive not yourself, saying the Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. <clears throat> for though you have smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remain but wounded men among them, Yet should they rise up every man in his tent and burn this city with fire. And it came to pass that when the army of the Chaldeans was broken up from Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, 
Then Jeremiah went forth out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin to separate himself there in the midst of the people. And when he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the ward was there whose name was Arijah, <clears throat> the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he took Jeremiah the prophet saying, thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. Then right. So now look at what you have to pay attention to what Jeremiah has been saying this whole time. Jeremiah is saying, yo, everybody, look, just give yourself over to the Chaldeans. Give yourself over to the Babylonians. If you do this, you'll live. That's been his message this entire time. But Jer Jeremiah hasn't gone anywhere because the Most High God is tell telling Jeremiah to stay there and keep prophesying to the people as long as they're there. Right? So now Jeremiah, as soon as he saw a break, right, he saw an opening because they were besieging us so we couldn't get out. All of a sudden, the Chaldeans, they kind of took a break. They walked away. So then Jeremiah said, man, I'm going up to Benjamin then to kind of get out of Jerusalem. So they're on his way to Jerusalem, I mean, to Benjamin. Then one of the uh, one of the soldiers grabbed him. Well, who was he? He wasn't a soldier or he is a soldier. But what kind of what did he say? A general? He was the captain of the war, like the warden of the jail, like the captain of the jail. Yeah. So you had the captain. He, he gaffled him up and he said, yo. You trying to go and give yourself over. And fall away to the Babylonians. I'm In other words, he called them a traitor. <clears throat> right? So he grabbed them up. Watch this. And Jeremiah said, it is false. I fall not away to the Chaldeans. But he hearkened not to them. So Elijah took Jeremiah and brought him, into the, brought him to the princes. <clears throat> when they say princes, the it's talking about the rulers. Right? So he brought him to the rulers. And what happened? Before the princes were wroth with Jeremiah... And smote him and Pay put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. When Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon, into the cabins, and Jeremiah had remained there many days, Zedekiah the king sent and took him out. The king asked him secretly in his house and said, Is there any word from Yahuwah? <clears throat> and Jeremiah said, There is. For said he, Thou shalt be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto King Zedekiah, what have I offended against thee or against thy servants or against this people that you have put me in prison? Where are right? now? So now Zedekiah snuck to him. Now that he found out he is in a in a in a, in jail, locked up, Zedekiah snuck, snuck to him, was like, look, man, are you hearing anything from the most high? And so Jeremiah's looking like, are y'all crazy? I've been telling y'all the same thing for years. You are about to be given over to the king of Babylon. Like, that's not changing. Then after he told him that, he was like, well, what you got against me that you put me in here like I did something wrong? Right? Watch this. Where are now your prophets which prophesied unto you, saying, the king of Babylon shall not come against you nor against this land? Therefore, mm -hmm. here now I pray thee, O my lord, the king, let my supplication, I pray thee, be accepted before thee, that thou cause me not to return to the house of Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. Then Zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit, commit Jeremiah into the court of the prison, and that they should give him a daily piece of bread out of the Baker Street, until all the bread in the city were spent. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Right? So remember, the resources are scarce, because we can't just go out and get resources or trade with other nations or countries and everything. So everything we have is just what's stored up or what we can produce inside of our own gates. So he's saying, OK, Jeremiah's like, man, I'm going to mess around and die the way y'all be treating me in these prisons. So Zedekiah was like, OK, make sure he get daily bread until we run out of bread. Right. So you can imagine that, you know, Zedekiah is holding on to all the resources and making sure that certain people get the resources and that it don't get spent up. So now he's allocated resources to Jeremiah while he's in prison just to make sure he keep him alive. So it was a, it was a show of mercy on him, right? <clears throat> he ain't necessarily let him free. He ain't supposed to be in jail, but as long as he's in jail, I'll at least make sure you get fed, All right? Keep going. Then Shephatiah, the son of Matan, and Gedaliah, the son of Pasher, and Jukal, the son of Shelemiah and Pasher, the son of Melchiah, heard the words of Jeremiah, heard the words that Jeremiah spoken unto all the people, saying, Thus says Yahuwah, 
He that remain in this city shall die by the sword, by famine, mm -hmm. or by pestilence. But he that goes forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life for a prey and shall live. Thus says the Lord, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Therefore, the princess said unto the king, we beseech thee, let this man be put to death. For thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war and remain. He does what? He weakeneth the hands of the men of war. Right. This, this is city. their charge against. They say, put him to death because we are at war right now. And he's making the people that have to fight for us to try to save our nation. He make them feel wrong for fighting against them, which weakens them. Right. And you got to look at it from their point of view there. This is our Nate. We in America. Right. We in America. We love America. Right. This is our nation. This is our city, our house. We work hard. You know what I'm saying? Everything we got here, we own. And you got the darn Russians that think they got the nerve to come in here and drop bombs on us. Right. The Russians is talking about how they're going to destroy America and China is going to talk about how they're going to destroy America. What? So, you know, you know what America's reaction would be at that point. Right. America's reaction would be, oh, no, I'm sending my son to the military. As a matter of fact, I'll go fight for myself. Right. That's what happened. What happened after 9-11? You know, what I mean, people was hyped after them planes flew into the building. And then they said that people in the Middle East did it. Saddam Hussein got weapons of mass destruction. He's behind all this stuff. You know how many people were excited to say, you know what? I'm signing up for the military today. Because you look at that and you say, my home is under attack. I'm going to fight back. So that's the same mindset of our people in, in Judah. We looking like our home is under attack against this raggedy Gentile. This pork eating darn nasty dirty foot Gentile going to kick in our temple and take the artifacts out of it and take it back to his land. And they took the last, they, they handled the last three Kings we had. They think they about to do this to us. They making us pay tribute to their unclean kingdom. In our mind, this is ridiculousness. So of course, we want to fight. But then you got one guy. Every, all the prophets, everybody is saying, we can fight. We can win. Things are going to go great. But you got this one guy. This one guy that's saying, nah. Y'all should give up. Turn yourself over. You'll live. If you fight, you're going to die. And he's from the same place we are. This is his home like us. Of course, what you're going to do is you're going to look at him and say, bro, you a traitor. That's why when he tried to go to Benjamin, they looking like you fall away to the Chaldeans. And when they say fall away, he's saying, he's saying you trading on us, right? You're going you gonna to trade and yeah. you're going to go over there and work for the Chaldeans. You a spy. <clears throat> right? And then now they're looking at him and they're trying to make a case against him and say, by the stuff he's saying, he's weakening our hands. The people that we encouraging people like, man, look, we can do this. If we go and we line up in this order and we swing our swords, keep our shields in front of us, we can do it. We can win this war, hyping each other up. And then you got somebody to come along like, if y'all fight, y'all going to die. Don't do it. Matter of fact, just give yourself over. It's going to be all right. You'll live if you give yourself over. Right? But giving ourselves over means we got to lose everything. We got to lose our house. We got to lose our kingdom. We got to lose our temple. Our stuff is going to be defiled. There's no way that God... You got to imagine how these people are rationalizing stuff. There's no way God wants us to let a Gentile defile our temple. Imagine how these boys would be talking today. This Negro logic that these boys got today, this stuff is ridiculous. No, nah, man, brother, that, that'll never work. You can't do that because God will never want you to blah, blah, blah. These boys be coming up their own darn logic for what God will want. Everything except reading what the book said. You don't think it was like that back then? They are doing the same thing. They looking like, nah, nah, man. God would never want us to, you know what I'm saying, not fight. That don't even make sense. His temple is here. The same temple that you've been disrespecting because you're a sinner. Keep going. Watch this. <clears throat> and 
in speaking such words unto them. For this man seeks not the welfare of the people, but the hurt. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king is not he that can do anything against you. Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Hamelech, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk into the mire. Now when Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs, which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then, sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Ebed-Melech, went forth out of the king's house and spake unto the king, saying, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah, the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon. And he is like to die for hunger in the, in the place where he is. For there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, saying, Take from here thirty men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die. So Ebed Melech took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury, and took from there old cast cloths and old rotten rags, and let them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Ebed Melech the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, But now these old cast cloths and rotten rags under thine arm armholes under the cords. Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with the cords and took him up out of the dungeon, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Right? So now when they wanted to kind of put Jeremiah to death, you know what I'm saying? They look like, nah, put him to death, man. That boy don't, you know what I'm saying? He weakened in the hands of the people. He's speaking to our hurt. He ain't looking for our well-being. He ain't trying to see this. In other words, they're saying he ain't trying to see us win. He want us to lose. Right? Put him to death. If you know Nebuchadnezzar is trying to kill all us and you got somebody that's saying, yeah, let him kill him, right? Meanwhile, we out here trying to say, hey, what can we do to live? He working against our cause. He ought to die, right? That's how they looking at it. So then they said uh, the, uh, Zedekiah was looking at it like, all right, man, well, what's this got to do with me? You know what I'm saying? I can't do nothing to you, so go ahead and kill him, right? So then the way that they decided to do it, they said, let's go to this dungeon. And the dungeon is so deep that you can't climb out of it. So they let them down into the dungeon and then it ain't no food, it ain't no water, ain't nothing down there. Yeah, and they Meyer. just gonna let them sit there and rot and die. Like, uh, what's Meyer? It's kind of like, it's kind of like, like poop or like, like just like, uh, uh what you find in gutters, like, like real yeah, nasty it's, stuff. You know it's waste, stuff. yeah, nasty, yeah, poop yeah. and stuff. Well, man, so, like the cesspool. They let him down in there. He's stuck in that stuff, just sitting in it. And then the Ethiopian run. He heard about it. Ethiopian run to the king. He's like, man, look, you can't let this happen. Man, gonna die. Right? Zedekiah was like, man, go get go get 30 of them boys. Cause it's a deep, it's a deep pit. They gotta pull them up. So you ain't gonna just be able to do it with a couple people. That's only that's how that's the only way it works in the movies, right? In the movies, you'll just see somebody falling off a cliff. You know what I'm saying? And they catch him at the last minute and hanging on like this. That's fake. Ain't nobody going to be able to be, nobody going to be strong enough to do no foolish shit like that. Right? Just hold a person like that and then pull them up. You know what I'm saying? That's not happening. Right? So they took 30 people, they strung together and made something like a rope and let it down and then they pulled them up. You know what I'm saying? Let them in. I mean, let them free. Well, not free. They they pulled him up and then they put him in a different jail. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They like, ah, that one too rough for you. Let's put him put him back in the, the previous jail. Right? <laughs> Keep going. What was that? Okay. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took Jeremiah the prophet unto him into the third entry that is in the house of the Lord. The king said unto Jeremiah, I will ask thee a thing. Hide nothing from me. Then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, if I declare it unto thee, will thou not surely put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, will thou not hearken unto me? All right. So he said, listen, he said, look, what are my options? All right, Zedekiah coming to him again. Like, look, just talk to me. Zedekiah keeps coming to him. Because remember, it's crunch time now. And Zedekiah ain't really got no more prophets left that, that'll lie to him. Right. So he's just trying to hope for something different out of Jeremiah. 
So he's looking like he's looking like, okay, look, just talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Tell me something. So then Jeremiah looking at it like, okay, let me ask you a question. You know what I mean? If I tell you the truth, ain't you gonna kill me? And if I give you some advice, are you even going to listen to me? Right? Keep going. Watch this. Zedekiah the king swear, see Jeremiah saying, as the Lord lives that made us, I will not put thee to death, neither will I give thee into the hand of those men that seek thy life. Then said Jeremiah unto Zedekiah, thus says Yahuwah, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, if thou will assuredly go forth unto the king of Babylon's princes, then thy soul shall live, and this city shall not be burnt with fire, and thou shalt not live in thine house. But if thou wilt not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then shall this city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and thou shalt not escape out of their hand. And Zedekiah the king said unto Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that are fallen to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. But Jeremiah said, they shall not deliver thee. Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of Yahuwah, which I speak unto thee. So it shall be well unto thee, and thy soul shall live. But if you refuse to go forth, this is the word that Yahuwah has showed me. Behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes. And those women shall say, thy friends have set thee on and have prevailed against thee. Thy feet are sunk into the mire, and they are turned away back. So, so they shall bring out all thy wives and thy children to the Chaldeans. Thou shalt not escape out of their hand, but shall be taken by, by the hand of the king of Babylon. And thou shalt cause the city to be burnt with fire. And Zedekiah then said Zedekiah unto Jeremiah, Let no man know of these words, and thou shalt not die. But if the princes hear that I have talked with thee, and they come unto thee, and say unto thee, Declare unto us now what you have said unto the king, hide it not from us, and we will not put thee to death. Also, what the king said unto thee, then thou shalt say unto them, I presented my supplication before the king that he would not cause me to return to Jonathan's house to die there. Then came all the princes unto Jeremiah and asked him, and he and he told them according to all the words that the king had commanded. So they left off speaking with him, for the matter was not perceived. So Jeremiah abode in the court of the prison until the day that Jerusalem was taken. And he was there when Jerusalem was taken. He was there when? When Jerusalem was taken. Right. So you can see Jeremiah tried to leave. He tried to get out of there. Right. But the most high God set it up to like, no, 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 no. I need your butt to stay there until the last man is there. So Jeremiah ended up being there when it was taken. Right. Zedekiah was talking to him while he was in prison trying to get something out of him. He didn't get what he wanted to get what he wanted. Right. Jeremiah just told him the same thing. Like, listen, you got to turn yourself in. You got to go. Trust me. You'll be all right if you do. Right. Then Zedekiah was looking like, man, if I do that, man, the boy's going to look at me like I traded. You know what I'm saying? These boys going to have my head. They're going to mess around and kill me. So now you can kind of see how the plot thickens. It's giving you a little bit more context of what's going on. Zedekiah is not conflicted because he internally is consciously evil or rebellious to God. He's conflicted because he's scared of his own people. He's scared of being overthrown. He's scared of losing his, 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 his position. He knows that these boys, just like when they came to, came about Jeremiah a little bit earlier, they came to Jeremiah and they was looking like, nah, man, Zedekiah, we should kill this boy. And Zedekiah's response was, well, I can't do nothing to you. So y'all, you know what I'm saying? You do with them what you will. He's scared of his people. He's scared of the people that surround him. So you can see that there's contention, right, within Israel. There's contention within our own people. Our own people is fighting against each other because it's getting tight. There's a group of people that's just like, man, I'm going to go join the Babylonians. And some of them did. And there's another group of people that's like, never. And I'm going to kill any Hebrew that say some foolishness like that. So Zedekiah looking like they're going to kill me themselves. So after he got done talking to uh, Jeremiah, he told him, don't tell anybody about what we talked about. Sure enough, 
the rulers came afterwards and they came in that. They're like, man, what y'all talk about? Jeremiah couldn't tell them. He couldn't tell them the full story of what they talked about. Right? Keep going. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army against Jerusalem, and they besieged. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, the city was broken up, and all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate, even Neb Nergal Sherezer, Shamgar Nebo, Chershikim, Chershkim, and Rapsaris. Nergal Sherezer, Rap Mag, with all the residue of the peoples of the princes of the king of Babylon. And it came to pass that when Zedekiah, the king of Judah, saw them and all the men of war, then they fled and went forth out of the city by night, by the way of the king's garden, by the gate between the two walls. And he went out of the way of the plain. But the Chaldeans' army pursued after them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And when they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Ribla in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah in Riblah before his eyes. And also the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with chains to carry him to Babylon. And the Chaldeans burnt the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and break down the walls of Jerusalem. And Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the remnant of the people that remained in the city and those that fell away and fell to him. And the rest right? So like all the, the ones that fell away, those are the people that, that joined the Babylonians, right? Like, okay, we give up, right? We give up. Then the ones that fought, they got taken captive if they didn't die, right? If they didn't get killed. So all the people that was left, the books say everybody that remained got taken. And that's going to tell us a few, a few was left that was poor. Keep going. I think it, I think it say it right here. But Nebuzaradan, and the captain of the guard, left of the poor of the people which had nothing in the land of Judah and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. So who now, inherited the earth? The poor. Right? So the poor, the weak folks, the poor, they're the ones that was given Israel. The poor of Israel. The people that didn't have no choice. Most our God set it up. But he's like, okay, well, it is some Hebrews that can stay here. You know what? Now you poor, now you own a vineyard. All the stuff that all the rich people in, in, in Jerusalem had, they ended up getting the benefit from it. Uh, right? Ooh, that yeah, testified yeah. how y'all she was going to do things. Absolutely. And where is that? At, uh, it's in, I think it's in the Psalms. It said all of the riches of the world are just stored up just for the righteous. That's right. All the stuff these rich people got, all the stuff they got, all the Jeff Bezos is in the, in the and the Mike Zuckerbergs of the world, all the stuff they got just going to be given to the righteous in the end. All right, just keeping it, you know what I'm saying? Just keeping it a little warm for us, you know what I'm saying? Just keep it a little warm. All these Gentiles that, you know what I'm saying, made all this money off the back of our ancestors, they just keeping that thing warm for us. It's all coming back to us, one way or another. Keep going. Or is that the end of the chapter? No. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Bab Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, saying, "Take him and look well to him, and do him no harm, but do unto him even as he shall say unto thee." So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, sent, and Nebuchadnezzar, Rabsaris, and Nergal Sherezer, Rabmag. And all the king of Babylon's princes, even they sent and took Jeremiah out of the court of the prison, committed him unto Gedaliah, the son of Ahikim, the son of Shaphan, that he should carry him home. So he dwelt home. So he dwelt among the people. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Go and speak to Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for evil and not for good. And they shall be accomplished in the day, in that day before thee. But I will deliver thee in that day, says Yahuwah, and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men whom thou art afraid. 
for I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prey unto thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, says Yahuwah. So that's that's how that's how this whole thing gets wrapped up. Right? Jeremiah ends up, he ends up being able to stay into the land. The poor people end up taking over the land. The few that was left, the poor. Everybody else got taken out of the land. Right? Grab second uh second Kings. Give me second Kings verse uh two verse twenty five. I mean chapter twenty five, verse one. Second Kings chapter 25, verse 1. So you, if, we, if you guys all remember from the readings, we've been reading the history. We've been reading Kings and Chronicles. But we kind of, now that we're at the end of Kings, and the end of the, uh, the end of the, um, of us still dwelling in Israel, we had to circle back to Jeremiah and Daniel and Ezekiel because around those prophets timelines were around the time of the end for us in israel so we're just jumping back to kings to summarize all of what we read and it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign in the tenth month in the tenth day of the month the nebuchadnezzar king of babylon came he and all his hosts against jerusalem and pinched against it and they built forts against it round about Right, so this is talking about the same events, same stuff that Jeremiah was just telling us about, about how he was circling us and he was fighting against us. And Zedekiah was asking, like, man, what should we do, man? Can you tell, can you ask God to come down here and make him go away and all that? You know what I'm saying? This is the same event. Watch this. Keep going. It's just from a different perspective this time. The city was besieged until the 11th year of King, of, of King Zedekiah. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city. There was no bread for the people of the land. The city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between two walls, which is by the king's garden. Now the Cal now the Chaldees were against the city round about. The king went the way toward the plain. The army when of the they say it's against the city round about, that means they circling the city and they they fighting through the walls. When they say the um the city was broken up, that means that there was a breach of the wall. So somewhere there was a break in the wall. And so all the people, a lot of the people tried to escape through that break of the wall. Right? Watch this. Keep going. The army of the Chaldees pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho. And all his army were scattered from him. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon to Ribla. And they gave right? So they caught the king because the king tried to get away too. So when they when they broke through the wall, the king tried to run out. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Running, 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 trying to get away. And all of a sudden, they overtook him. In other words, they caught up to him. Watch this. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him with fetters of brass, carried him to Babylon. Right. So then they, they took his eyes out. Right. They bound him up. Right. In chains. And then they took him to Babylon. So if you remember Jeremiah's prophecy against Zedekiah, Jeremiah told him, he said, you will be taken to Babylon, but you will not see it. Right. All right. So this was already prophesied to Zedekiah. Yeah, and, I'm, and, and Jeremiah probably didn't even know exactly this was going to happen. But he knew however going to play out, your butt wasn't going to see it. And this is how it actually played out. They he took his eyes out. There. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon unto Jerusalem. And he mm -hmm. burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem. And every great man's house burnt he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Now the rest of the people that were left in the city and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon with the remnant of the multitude, Dibnezu Zaridan, the captain of the guard, carry away. The captain of the guard left of the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen, and the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases, and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord, did the Chaldeans break in pieces and carry the brass of them to Babylon. And the pot right, so they they start breaking up all our stuff, all these beautiful artifacts that that uh that we consider to be set apart 
and holy and can't nobody touch them. The Gentiles, they touch them. They'll die. They ought to be put to death. All this stuff. These Gentiles walk right in, just start breaking our stuff up, just hammering it down, breaking it into pieces, carrying it away so they can melt it down and they can make idols out of it. All right. This, this you got to understand how we feel when this is happening. All right. This is the most set apart, holy thing. Can't no Gentile touch our stuff. <laughs> they walk right in. They killing us. They got us all gaffled up and chained up. Right. And we got to watch them slam hammers and tools against the stuff that the most high God created off of designs out of heaven. Break this stuff up into pieces. And they about in our minds, they about to take this stuff. And go melt it down and make a darn idol out of it. And this is God's stuff. The only true God. And y'all about to defile it. Right? We sick about what's happening right now. Sick. Keep going. Watch this. So that's why God was telling Ezekiel, I'm taking the pride of your eyes, right? Your wife. Like, don't cry about it. This is what God was talking about. All of this, the, the temple's burning. The temple was the pride of our eyes. So God was like, don't cry about it. He was telling the people in Ezekiel, because Ezekiel, them already in Babylon, is captive. So Ezekiel, so the people got to look at Ezekiel. They got to know like, okay, so he is, he is acting out what's about to happen to Jerusalem. And this is what God was talking about. And the fire pans and the bowls and such things, and the bowls and such things as were um, as were of gold in gold and of silver in silver. <sighs> My bad. The captain of the guard took away the two pillars, one sea and the bases which Solomon had made for the house of the Lord. The brass of all these vessels was without weight. And the height of the one pillar was 18 cubits and the chapter upon it was brass. And the height of the chapter was three cubits. And the Reef in the wreathing work and the pomegranates upon the chapter round about all of brass and like unto these had the second pillar with the wreathing work. The captain of the guard took Shariah the chief priest and Zephaniah the second priest and the three keepers of the door. And out of the city he took an officer that was set over the men of war and five men of them that were in the king's presence which were found in the city. And the principal scribe of the host, which mustered the people of the land and threescore men of the people of the land that were found in the city. And Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, took these and brought them to the king of Babylon to Riblah. And the king of Babylon smote them and slew them at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So Judah killed them, had, boy. Right. They got up some stragglers, took them right to, to the king of uh, Babylon so the king of Babylon can lay judgment and killed them, boy. So Judah was carried uh, carried away out of their land. And as for the people that remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had left, even other, even over them he made Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, ruler. And when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah governor, there came to Gedaliah, to Mizpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and Johann, Johanan, the son of Kareth, Kyria, and Sariah, son of Tehumeth, and Netophathite, and Jezaniah, the son of Mechathite, Mechathite, they, they and their men, and Gedaliah swore to them and to their men, and said unto them, Fear not to be the servants of the Chaldees. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it will be well with you. But it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, Nathaniah, the son of Elishama, of the royal seed, came, ten men with him, and smote Gedaliah, that he died. And the Jews of the Cal and the Jews and the Chaldees that were with him in Mizpah. And all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the armies arose and came to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldees. And it came to pass in the seventh and thirteenth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month. On the seventh and twentieth day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up his head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, out of the prison. And he spake right, so this is a different king. 
<laughs> right? So you had some people that came out of Egypt that was hiding in Egypt. They came back to us in the land. Gedaliah had been king, and Gedaliah is a descendant of David, right? Mm -hmm. So Gedaliah had become king, well, or not king, but governor, mm -hmm. right? So he 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 was he was a, he was the one running the show, right? And he telling them like, look, I understand y'all back from Egypt, but go ahead and turn yourself over into you know Babylon. Trust me, that's the only way it's gonna work out, right? Gedaliah, you know what I'm saying? He under he under Nebuchadnezzar's thumb. He ain't playing with him. He looked like, look, just turn yourself in. So our people didn't like that, right? We didn't like that thing. So what we did, we killed him, all right? Killed that boy. And ran and back. Went back, you know what I'm saying, got out of Dodge, all right? So then after that, um, after, after he died, then Nebuchadnezzar actually is no longer king either. So we read about some of this when we read in uh, Daniel. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? He ended up being like an animal, running around like an animal, right? So Nebuchadnezzar, he was out there in the field with the animals, and then he got his sight. He gave, you know what I'm saying? He, he gave his life to the Most High God after that. You know what I'm saying? He gave glory to the Most High God after that, right? So eventually, he no longer was king. And the next king of Babylon is, uh, read the name again, I think it's Evil Murdoch. Evil, evil, evil Murdoch. Yeah, even and, uh, and, Jeremiah, and Jeremiah tell you a little bit about like uh, what was going on at that time, uh, when, like right before Ger Gedaliah died, how he was running Jerusalem. And Jeremiah, he kind of summarized the same thing, but it's a little bit more detailed. in Jeremiah, if y'all want to know, um, like after after the after Babylon took over Jerusalem, Jeremiah gave a little uh, little uh, more context on what was going on at that time before Ge Gedaliah got killed. Right. And so you see uh, you see the next king after Babylon, the king of ba I mean, uh, the next king after Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon was Evil Merodach. Right. And then there's going to be another king after that that we'll learn about from Daniel. So usually when people read Daniel straight through, they think it go right from right from Nebuchadnezzar to uh, Belshazzar. Right. But that's not the case. So first is evil Merodach, and then he's the one who lets Jeconiah go. Because remember, Jeconiah or Jehoiachin, right? Yeah. Jehoiachin, he got mm -hmm. taken captive, but he was treated nicely in Babylon. Right? When he was in Babylon, he was eating with the king. He was eating at the king table. After right? Prison. Huh? After he got out of prison, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They let him out. They let him out and they let him, you know what I'm saying? They he he ate with the he ate with the rulers. You know what I'm saying? So after that, even Merodach, they let him go. You know what I'm saying? They gave him freedom. So we'll we'll read more about that and uh and and what's what's kind of happening next. And now we have to kind of get into we have to get into uh get back into Daniel. And we're gonna look at the uh, back at the book of Daniel and kind of see how things progress from there. Right? Daniel's gonna have a whole lot of prophecy for us. All right, a whole lot of prophecy that we can get. And then we're going to touch a little bit more in Ezekiel, uh, a tiny bit more in Jeremiah. We'll probably wrap Jeremiah up, uh, but we're going to read uh, Lamentations as well uh, to just kind of see how the people felt after, after we left the land, after everybody left the land, after our temple was destroyed, you know, how the people, how the people was mourning it. Remember, uh, y'all told Ezekiel, he said the people couldn't mourn, but they had to mourn to themselves. In other words, the way we would normally have to deal with this is we would probably pray, we face the temple, we kind of look at it and try to kind of try to gather ourselves like a funeral, right? But he said, "No, nah, don't mourn. You got to mourn to yourselves." And that's what we going that's what we going to read about in Lamentations, how the people are just mourning to themselves. Right? Jeremiah is kind of documenting how the people are feeling and how they mourn to themselves. Any questions? Yeah. So uh Congratulations, you know, you know, you guys made it all the way from made it all the way from judges, all the way from well, all the way from Joshua, all the way to Kings, right? So you remember Joshua brought us, Joshua brought us into the land, Joshua generation died, we get judges, we just run around doing what we want to do, not necessarily having no leader to like bring the people together and understand who the most high is. But we in judges just trying to figure it out. Then we get to Samuel. Samuel come, becomes a judge, one of the first prophets of God in a long time. 
give us Saul, the king, and the kingdom starts. Then David takes his place, right? Then David leads the people. Then you got his son, and they go all the way to the end of kings. Now it's all gone, just like God told us, right? Moses even said it. He said, I know y'all rebellious. Y'all been rebelling this whole time. How much more after I'm dead? Our God already showed me what was going to happen, right? Moses told us that in Deuteronomy. He's like, this thing will get taken away anyway. You know what I'm saying? So now we see all of the prophecy, all of the prophecy that came true based off us breaking the covenant, right? So we get the full story. So, you know, I want to congratulate y'all from like, like sticking with the sticking with it and understanding exactly what happened. Because a lot of people don't read this stuff. They have no idea, right? People that go to church, they just jump right into like Jesus Christ dying on the cross for their sins. They have no idea all of the stuff that happened before that, right? So this give you a whole lot more context, a whole lot more knowledge, a whole lot more uh, uh, perspective on exactly what the book is trying to tell you. You know what I mean? So uh, then we even went through a few prophet books. So this is real good stuff. Um, we're going to get into exactly what we got going, what we had going on in uh, Babylon and Persia and then us being able to return. But, uh, you know, I just want to uh, thank y'all for sticking with it. You know, you guys have already like, uh, like gained so much knowledge from all of this stuff that we've been reading. And you got to like, you got the leg up on like probably everybody that everybody ever that's sitting in the church next to you. Right. And we ain't even halfway done. Huh? I was saying we ain't even halfway done. Yeah, we ain't even halfway there. Yeah. All right, because uh, what we what we transfer into now, I want y'all to, I want y'all to really, really focus on, on, on feeling what just happened. Right, putting yourself in, in the shoes of our ancestors as this stuff has happened. And I can see y'all in the chat, y'all kind of, you know, what I'm saying, oh, tough time for our people. Right, that's exactly how I want y'all to see it, because now you're gonna see when we shift, right? When we shift and when we have an opportunity. To, to to show up for the most high God and and, and to show ourselves um, approved before the most high God when we have a chance to come back to the land, you're gonna see the general attitude of the people, or at least some a lot of the people are is very different. Right? People are gonna respond to things very different, especially leaders, right? They gonna they were they're gonna take things a lot more serious. Right. And this is uh this is you know this is gonna be some of the attitude that leads to what we see in the New Testament. Right. When we talk when we talk about the Pharisees and how strict they are for certain things and all that, we gon we gon understand where that attitude comes from, right? The scarcity that we felt and, and the feeling that, you know, all this could be taken away from us at any moment, right? It causes the overcorrection. So we're gonna kind of start seeing the the root of some of that stuff. All right, well, let's pray out. Let's have a peace, y'all.